Welcome back to Breakout. Today we're going to be getting into Ender.io, but before we start that, we need to sort a couple of things out. First of all, if you set up your hopping bonsai pot and you wonder why it stopped working, um, yeah, if you put your torches there, it stops. <laughs> Even though this thing is only fitting in one block space, it won't take a light. And uh, yeah, it took me a little while to actually figure out what was going on. I thought this was full. Nope, upgraded it. No full, not nothing full whatsoever. And it still wouldn't work. So yes, make sure you, you leave two blocks of space above, well, one block above the hopping bonsai pot space. Anyway, um, aside from that, we need to get started by building a tank. And I want a portable tank. I think I've got everything I need um, because I am going to get some witch water going. We started that, I think, in the last episode. So we need a uh, portable tank. That's fine. And thank you for the commenters who said, if you want this thing to go a lot faster, you should move it onto a um, three by three. Let's just get that going. You can go in there instead of just on one. So we're just going to grab that, put it there, and then I will just be able to dig this back up again. So I don't really need that to be there. And now it's on a three by three. And hopefully if we grab some water, uh, of which I've just got to figure out a way to get to endless amounts of water, because we don't really have that to start with, then let's just see how well this actually does. So let's just grab a bucket of water and pop you in there. So one, two, three. So yeah, maybe that's maybe about uh, 50 seconds or under a minute to convert into which water so we are going to probably want to automate that a little bit so let me just move that over here to there and then we're going to actually need to put something like fluid up in there and then this thing should stop water going in there because well we've got infinite mushrooms <laughs> should stop water going in there because this can only contain one particular liquid uh so yeah that is one thing but we'll probably want to put a filter on it anyway so let's just take a look at the fluid duct recipe. We've used item ducts before now, and uh, do I actually have any fluid duct? Um, item duct, uh, hardened fluid duct, we can use that, that'll be fine. And a filter will be fine as well. And let's get that sorted out. So regular sort of straightforward thing, connect your fluid duct together, uh, put the filter on this side, I think. Yeah, although if this, carries the wrong liquid it might get stuck before this but let's give it a try anyway so whitelist the only thing we're going to allow in here is going to be which water so grab a bucket drop that in i hope that counts well, that's which water bucket is this yeah this is fluid duct so uh left click right click uh, let's assume that's going to work we'll see and let's empty it there, and let's just put a servo on this from the other side. So, servo. Do I have any? I do have three of them. All good. Pop you down. Put the servo on. Change this to ignored. And it'll dump everything out of there. So there is now two buckets of witch water, not one. And off it goes again. So yeah, it hasn't pulled anything out of that. And that will stay as it is until it turns into witch water because this filter is acting on it. So that's all nice and automated. If we can get infinite water of some kind, let me just have a look in JEI. I know someone of a commenter did say how we can actually do this, but I just want to double check first before I take a look at those. So water, uh, magma crucible from ice. That's not terribly useful. Uh, centrifugal separator. So you can take sugar cane produce sugar and you also get some water out of it i assume um yes or a wooden crucible by putting this stuff in it wooden crucible is sort of the way i have been doing things up to now i just have not been um i've not really been automating it so uh what we could do is move this and then do a little bit of uh sort of messing around with this so let's just go and head downstairs with you and pop you down for a second and grab you as well. Oh, oh, I hate it when he does this. You can't wrap this up with that. Well, we need a cardboard box. Can I make a cardboard box? Please be in this pack. It's not in the pack. <laughs> um, Cardboard? No, no cardboard boxes are not in the pack. That's really inconvenient. Okay, never mind. Uh, I guess we'll get eight stacks of sticks out of here and we will just Get rid of you for a second. There we go. 
and we'll pop downstairs with this. I just want it to be close to here so I don't have to bother about this in the future. And we'll put it in this corner, something like that will we'll do fine. So if we have it coming out of this way, we'll have our little sort of uh, drawers sort of here. Should have enough light. Oh, that might not, that might be a problem. Let's just make sure there's two blocks of space. Um, so let's put it one down from there, just in case. And let's put everything back. So that was the word that was. The sticks can go all in there. Um, that's uh, full without the storage upgrades. Put them both in. The apples and the oak leaves. Okay, what I also want to do is just get the key that we got given by the quest, which is a good automation thing, and we're going to lock that chest so it can only ever have those things in it. Are you going to grow? You are going to grow. That's great. So I don't have to do anything with you. Uh, key should be over here. Yep, that's straightforward. We also have a draw controller as well. We got given as part of the quest. So if you haven't used storage drawers before, it's very handy. Let's just right click with the key, locks it to those particular items, even if I take all of those items out. And that's very important because we are going to take all of those items out. What we're going to do is pull from that uh, drawer into our crucible, I think, and we'll just get this started. So I'm just going to just get rid of you with my um, crescent hammer. And will you? No, you won't accept either one of those. That's fine. And let's get rid of you. And let's go and see if we can get an item duct. I'll just get the opaque ones, I guess. It's not going to be not going to be outgrown, I don't think, by the trees. So that's fine. Some servos. Hardened servo, I don't think we need. Uh, I am probably going to need another filter, though. Yes, I am going to need another filter. Uh, that's some paper and some other stuff. Paper, I think I made. Yeah, what's the other stuff? Filter. Uh, one filter, um, uh, just some iron nuggets, of which I probably already have some. Yeah, a couple there. Let's just make a couple of filters or however many it'll give me. There's well, just one. Never mind. OK, so filter from here, we want to just send it into the wooden crucible. And from the wooden crucible, uh, basically, we can set up the previous thing, which is basically to output water. So um, that can go. Well, I just want to put a block down now. Let's just put uh, some planks down for a second. Yeah, I would just like our crucible to be on top of that. And then we will just make sure there is a fluid duct. OK, and then anything coming out of here can go in there. So we don't have to worry about any kind of filter whatsoever. And that will just start feeding water in as and when it's supplied with something that can make water, which is what we're about to do. We just have to put in some item duct opaque. And uh, let's just put that in end first and set this up with a filter one filter. OK, and that needs to be a whitelist only. And we need to grab just one of these oak leaves. I'll just serve as a filter. There we go. You can go back now. And now I can just connect this thing up to here and put a servo on it, of course. Um, the other way of doing things is not, not a servo, but uh, the retriever, I think it's called. Retriever. Yes, retriever. It needs better resources. It needs uh, eyes of ender, and they're expensive, though, those... That's kind of uh, ended dust, so we, we don't really want to use that just yet. Uh, that can be ignored. This should get start putting stuff in already. No. Um, that really should have worked. <laughs> oh, yes, it is. Yeah, it's just slow because we're using this item duct opaque. Uh, that is... No, that's still faster than it can actually output. That's fine. And then this should start pouring water into here. <laughs> Once there's enough water to pour, that is, uh, it will pour water into here. And that's trying to output water. That's no good. Uh, yeah, that's slightly annoying. It won't go into here, that much is for certain. So maybe this just has to fill up and then it will actually work. I'll, I'll give it a, a few minutes to go by itself and we'll see if we actually get that uh, running. If not, then I may have to amend this setup particularly to sort some other things out. But uh, for now, that's fine. The Ender IO conduits uh, are also good, but they... Um, and to get to the higher tier ones, they can only carry one liquid as well. Uh, so it, it helps if if that's not the case. Anyway, um, yeah, that's fine. So we've got some kind of automated water setup going that will just get automatically grown. And this is getting tidier up here. So from here, we have to get into Ender IO, which requires us to get to the basic capacitor. And I really wish that had integration. Basic capacitor. 
And that is straightforward. It's just some copper, some gold nuggets, and some grains of infinity. Now, we've only got limited supply of grains of infinity until we automate it, and that will come up soon as well. But in the meantime, we can just get started for the quest, and let's see what the quest actually opens up for us. So there's one capacitor. That should give us the quest. Uh, there we go. Yep. And we can press claim. And now we can see the tab. So we've got lots of other things we can get to. Go up to the capacitor, so that's power storage. On this side is uh, going to be enemies, basically. And uh, then on the other sides, we have that's power generation, a sterling generator. Yeah, um, it's upgradable as well. So we might well want that instead of the coal generator, which is handy because I don't quite like the coal generator. Um, I keep having to burn wood to feed it. Uh, charcoal works perfectly well in there as well. Enchanted, not too concerned about just yet. And then first machines, that's going to be the crude machines. Yeah, the simple sag mill. And then you go on into the more extensive ones. So why don't we get started by looking at the sterling generator then. So sterling, sterling. So a sterling engine or sterling generator is something that uses the difference between something hot and something cold to create power. Uh, I don't know if that's the case in the Ender I.O. version. I rarely use its generators. I tend to use its machines a lot more. We need a simple machine chassis, which we've been given as part of the... Um, if you remember when we broke through uh, there, there were four of them on a wall in an item frame. So that is there. Um, helps you on the right thing. Uh, we're going to need some infinity bimetal gears and some stone bricks. Well, stone bricks I can make easily enough. Infinity bimetal gears, however, we're going to need some grains of infinity, some iron and iron nuggets, and we've got all of that. Uh, we do, however, going to have a shortage of grains of infinity. So to get started, I'm going to use two of them for this, and we're going to get some stone. Uh, that's polished andesite. That won't help. Stone bricks, I'm going to need more of that, aren't I? So I need to get some just regular stone and uh, put those like that and I'll make some more stone bricks good and then we want some iron I need some more iron please tell me i'm not out of iron i am out of iron uh, no that's aluminium is there iron in here there is iron in there good and that will just keep keep working as long as this keeps getting supplied but you can see i've removed this auto hammer because i had like 11 stacks of gravel <laughs> so i thought well it's going to be a bit wasted as it is we actually want that to be producing more power than is being consumed and right now that's not the case it's not building up so this sieve is using up all of it uh, so we are going to change that a little while the other thing i got recommended in the comments was to say there is this down here this brick and if we could find some way of getting through it with harvest level improbable right now we've got harvest level industrial uh, there are apparently resources down there, so I'm going to have to head for that. For that, we're going to need at least steel, and that's going to need some Ender I.O. stuff. So that's why we're heading into Ender I.O. Um, yeah, where was I? Steel, uh, sorry, iron. So let's just dump that in one of these furnaces, if one of them has some resources. <laughs> I've got no uh, tiny coals in, in any of them. Well, you'll do. Uh, let's put you in there and uh, get some iron, please. And we'll just dump this charcoal back in here. Everything else is pretty straightforward in the recipe, apart from these infinity bar metal gears. So I need four, uh, probably about nine iron to actually get that done. Everything else I will have already. I need those simple machine chassis. Uh, there they are. Okay, this isn't an expert pack, so it should be straightforward to actually make them. In fact, how do you actually make them? More grains of infinity and more iron. Oh, iron alloy. Interesting. Uh, oh, okay, that's something I don't rec recognize. Is that a new thing? Iron alloy ingot. Any two other base metal ingots, and it's an alloy, so you have to make that in one of the NIO machines, NIO alloy smelter. So we, we definitely want to make sure that we don't use up all of our um, simple machine chassis before we make an alloy smelter. So that's going to have to be... Uh, sort of next priority, so that's fine. I'll just wait for this iron to cook up and then we'll continue. And there we go, the iron's still cooking up, but I just about had just about enough to get two of the infinity by metal gears. And then we just need a furnace and a piston. Uh, furnace, I have quite a few spare, I made a few extra just so in case I needed to cook lots of things rapidly. And uh, the piston should be relatively straightforward. I just need to make sure I've got some wood, some cobblestone, some of you will do, uh, some redstone and that's about it uh oh <laughs> more iron 
It's fine, I've got more iron now. One piston. One simple sterling generator. Okay. Harness the heat. So let's take a look. Um, you will just take, it seems like, uh, just fuel. That's going to be perfectly fine. And uh, is there any sort of upgrades to this thing? Uh, efficiency is 80%. I'll need to go and look at what increases the efficiency of this thing. But the assumption is that uh, this, of course, will supply power. We're going to need some power conduit sooner or later because the machines like that down there really shouldn't be just directly attached like this. They should be actually through some kind of power conduit. Um, conduits are available in Andrea, of course. So there is the simple energy conduit there. That does tend to need a few things. Sand and gravel for the conduit binder and clay. So that has to be generated somehow. Uh, and conductive iron, which is usually iron and redstone. Yes, but that needs an alloy smelter to do. So we're not there yet. Uh, there is, however, the, um, the thermal type. So duct, duct. Uh, the leadstone flux duct, which should be quite straightforward if a little expensive, <laughs> just because, uh, and there's a lot of redstone, but we need lead and a little bit of glass. And we've got some lead in here, I want to say. It's sort of a purple color. There we go. So lead, that's going to got 16 lead for us. That's enough for that. And did I also make up some more lead? Um, maybe, but it's not in there. Maybe it's in here. Mm, don't immediately see it, but that's not... Oh, I already cooked it. There we go. <laughs> we'll put this in here and use something I prepared earlier. Mm, okay, so that just needs some glass and we also need some redstone. And I should have some more redstone in here. So let's just make... I don't know how many batches of this we want. Uh, let's just say 24 should be fine. I don't want to use all my redstone up, but I want a decent amount just so that this is going. And then we can sort of move things around, I think, a little bit. Um, do I actually want to do that right now? Not terribly. Um, we're getting sort of stuff in here that I probably want to feed back into this. And um, yeah, let me move things around. OK, I put our generators down here. And what you immediately know is that Endryo's Sterling generator makes a noise. Don't like that. I would rather that be a lot quieter so we're going to take out our <laughs> super sand muffler and we're going to basically go for uh adding one of these so uh can we actually see anything of the recent ones so uh please 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 have oh, it's got its own sound system that is annoying please don't implement your own sound system guys please use the same one that everyone else does um yes uh, is there any anything in Endryo here at all? Open blocks? No. No. Oh, that's so annoying. Okay, uh, I think there'll probably be some kind of setting in mod options. So if you go into mod options and Endryo, there's probably some kind of thing in here. Endryo uh, config. Do we have any Endryo uh, machines, maybe? Um, let's just see. Do we have the generators in here? Personal settings, generators um well it's not any of those maybe combustion no that's the tank size hmm that's extremely annoying then <laughs> client settings is there any going to be any sort of audio in here whatsoever this would be really nice and dry oh audio you know that that would be kind of nice mm, personal settings i'm sure it's going to be in somewhere but if anyone knows where it is do let me know Otherwise, we're going to end it with just the sound of this thing cooking things every single episode, which is wonderful. Once you've heard it once, maybe. Uh, anyway, let's just grab that stuff from here. There we go. And this is all really set up. We just need to make sure that this gets fed with output from our sieving. So if we just grab... Uh, in fact, I don't want that. I want to just go with the cheap stuff. Yeah, because I've got more of it. Um, oh, where is the uh, opaque stuff? Uh, there it is. It's my inventory. So let's just send you this way. And we have... Yeah, I need to get rid of that for a second. But we do have the cheap stuff we can put this way. And there we go. So we'll be able to feed mini coal from up there to down here. And I think it's round robin by default. I, it's not going to go into one machine permanently, but let's give this a go 
see if this actually works. So we want to just set, we do actually need a filter for this one because it's got two outputs. So a filter and we want a servo. Servo can, um, let's just set the filter up first. We want mini coal. So blacklist this one for mini coal. So mini coal will never be sent this way because it's going to be sent every other way. Okay, and then we can probably put filters on the other ones to make sure that other stuff doesn't go to them. But to be honest, um, eh, it may just be fine by itself. So let's just turn it on and let's see what it actually does with stuff. Uh, it should still get rid of the mini coal, hopefully. Or it might have to go into the back of the generators if they're sided. Uh, let's wait for it to actually get through these and see if it actually sends stuff down there. Um, yeah, let me go and look if there's any way to turn off this audio. So nice and simple and compact now. Cobblestone goes down into the hammerer. The hammerer hammers it into gravel. Gravel, it goes into this buffer chest, which I can then put stuff in from over here, like this, once uh, I have any spare. And then everything continues to be sieved and put into our chest. So you see here, this will sieve once I actually have enough power. I think it's probably out of power right now. Let's just go and take a look. Do we have enough down here? We have nothing there, nothing there. That's probably why. Um, it's just out of initial power. So we need to probably have some supplemental power from somewhere. For the moment, I'll just dump in some uh, stuff from here. Let's just keep it going with some tiny coal. And uh, we can go with something else later. So you can have some and you can have some. And that will be do it for now. And we can improve it later. We can do things like just take um, the charcoal out of here and put it into both sides of a, a normal furnace. So you can put it into the back as fuel and into the top as the product and the bottom will be charcoal. Feed that out into your generators and away you'll go with a similar kind of thing. However, for now, I don't really much care about that in here. I'm going to start getting automatic resources. And I don't really have to bother with it anymore. Other than occasionally, if I want to save power, <clears throat> I can just move this thing up here and uh, it won't consume any power anymore because the power is right there. And it, of course, it won't actually be feeding this anymore. So this will eventually run out. But yeah, it saves some power while we get going more properly. And even more space is actually freed up. We can, of course, be starting to use lava for power too. And that's the other thing that we should probably look for. So lava, uh, let's see what it's actually used up in. So let's see what it generators it has, if we have any. Uh, so magmatic dynamo, that is thermal expansion, which we are not there because we didn't choose thermal expansion. We chose ender IO. Of course, it's going to be something that I should have chosen, isn't it? Oh, well, um, I guess that's one thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, fine, lava heat exchanger. Is that Ender IO? It is Ender IO. Interesting. So, uh, yeah, I guess. But is that actually going to produce power? Or is it just, oh, it generates energy by cooling down lava. But it cools down lava. So, yeah. Uh, hmm, interesting. I'm not sure what the product is. Is it going to actually produce anything? doesn't say whether it'll actually produce anything or not. But we can make it with nether cotter. Okay. Let's not worry about that. That needs an alloy smelter. So to get started with some more stuff, we do actually need to get further into Endo IO. So let's, well, now we've got the sterling generator, we get some energy conduits. <laughs> of course, it's going to give me some energy conduits. Only eight of them, though, and that's not going to really do for in here. Uh, we can go to a combustion generator. Uh, so combustion generator lets you combine fuels and coolants from a variety of sources to create a much stronger stream of power. So combustion generator is probably going to need the upgraded. It's probably going to need steel, I would imagine. Combustion generator. Electrical steel, dark steel, yes. Yeah, we need to actually get alloy done first. So that means going down here, first machines are making a simple alloy smelter. So simple alloy. Alloy. And uh, same sort of stuff we've made before. Stone gears is kind of convenient. A couple of furnaces and a bucket. So bear with me a second, I'll make one of those. And here it is, simple alloy smelter. All those materials are ready. And we have a power bar under here, effectively, we can grab pretty much from anywhere from here onwards. And oh, it, it oh. <laughs> just slightly too low to jump up. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, I can just get upstairs. And then put in just a, uh, a simple bit of leadstone flux, hopefully. And we should end up with a simple alloy smelter. Yep, that's taking power. And that means we can use that to make some stuff. In particular, what I'm interested in is steel. Steel is iron steel ingot. Uh, steel ingot is going to be iron and something else. Pulverized coal. We don't have a pulverizer right now, but I did make some pulverized coal, if I remember rightly. 
Uh, I was just testing something else. Uh, two pulverized coal. That's not very many. But you can make it in an, a quartz grindstone with just by putting some coal in and turning the handle by holding it and right click. Uh, I don't actually need to do that. And let's just see how many of each it actually takes. It takes one to four. So I am going to need to make more. Uh, while we do that, though, since we're making this, we probably want to make the sag mill because that is also uh, <laughs> going to mean I don't need that grindstone anymore. I can just use the sag mill and that will get us going. So we need a couple of iron, some flint, some stone gears, and another piston. So let's get, get those bits and pieces. Uh, I think I've got most of the stuff. Uh, I'll get some cobblestone. Um, that will do, I think. Maybe. Let's give it a go. Uh, stone gear. So we'll get, um, let's get four of those or six of those. We're going to need it for the other machine, whatever the other machine is in that quest. And now we just need the piston. So just one of those, please. Yeah, don't want to waste that. And some flint. We'll have flint already in here somewhere, no doubt. Thought I'd seen it. Yeah, there's three flint. And one more of those uh, simple machine chassis. That should be everything. Yep, simple sag mill. And again, we're going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to put this right next door. And a simple sag mill. So we'll just grab some coal from here. Um, yeah, let's just actually reduce the amount there. Let's just say 12. And let's see if it actually produces pulverized coal at the bottom. Hopefully it will. And that will just mean our well, thermal foundation. Oh, no, it is all dictionary. That's good. We just need one more piece of coal. Come on, one more piece of coal. Okay, and then we'll put it in here with a piece of iron, and you are going to turn into uh, turn into steel, hopefully. Or oh, that is actually consuming the, the power buffer quite a lot. Yeah. Are you out of power again? Probably. I need a more reliable amount of power, clearly, if that's going to not have... If that's going to have problems even, cons even sort of fulfilling its own power requirements from the one sieve, as well as these machines. So that is okay. That's out of power. Uh, let's just take this out for a minute and just grab this when it finishes. Okay. And you'll see the power is coming back now. So this is clearly consuming all the power. 98, 99, and one, one little, one steel ingot. Now, the steel ingot is going to be useful for the improbable, improbable. Because we need a steel pickaxe, we need three of these steel ingots with two sticks, and that will get us mining level improbable. So I'm just going to go and craft the rest of this steel. One important thing here you're going to get out of this sag mill when you start pulverizing coal is this sulfur. It's the last ingredient in getting a better upgrade for our crucibles. In particular, um, if we have a look at this, look, look sulfur, you can take blaze powder and redstone, and we have some of that over here. Uh, whoops, uh, redstone's in my inventory. A blaze powder? Yep, blaze powder, so let's get two of you. And we can take this over here and get two blaze powder, one redstone, and one, whoops, one sulfur. And we get pyrothium dust. Okay, the pyrothium dust, in turn, can be used as fuel, well, I suppose. Uh, that's one way of using it. Uh, but there is another way, I think. Let's just look at the crucible. Is it by the crucible? I think it is. So the crucible, uh, the fire crucible. Uh, we want the heat sources. So you see, blazing pyrothium is 15 times rather than 3, which is lava, which is what we're using right now. So blazing pyrothium is just pyrothium dust in a magma crucible. Uh, and of course, we don't have a magma crucible yet, but in order to get there, we probably want this blazing, well, this pyrothium dust and have it on hand for later. So that's good to have in the meantime. There's some more iron. And are you done yet? Yeah, you are done. So we got one more piece of steel. And that can just make the last piece of steel there. And then we just need a couple of sticks, really. Uh, sticks I usually have somewhere. Nah, there they are. There's loads more downstairs in that chest, but uh, for the moment, let's just grab it from here. Where'd those sticks go? Ah, they, I've got already loads in my inventory. Never mind. Uh, you are 60%. That's fine. Ooh, uh, if I didn't mention it, I uh, may have mentioned it. I can't remember if I did or not. Uh, Ender.io... Uh, there is a machine setting, a machine um, audio level in powered, uh, sorry, uh, in Ender.io personal settings, but it just doesn't work. Um, yeah, so just in case I didn't mention it, yeah, it doesn't work for the generators. I wish it did. Doesn't, 
unfortunate. Are you finished? Ah, 78%. And anything else? Uh, I think everything else downstairs is covered now. We've pretty much done all the automation I wanted to get to, at least immediately. And the last machine is the third one, which is the simple powered furnace. Uh, not that I particularly need one, I can just get away with these for now, but I guess we, we need to need it for the quest anyway, so we may as well craft that. But before we do that, we're going to make this steel pickaxe. One steel pickaxe, and that will get us to improbable level. And then that, uh, let me just make sure I've got some blocks on me in case there's any problems down there. Yeah, and let's just dump some other stuff away. We get rid of lots of stuff out my inventory, just in case there is good resources down there. In fact, let's just dump all of this. Um, dump all of you as well and away you go so let's just grab you and let's go and see what's down there shall we so if this will let me I'm gonna go take this steel pickaxe and break this block netherrack hmm netherrack more netherrack more netherrack I want ladders I need some way of getting back up. Uh, just sticks will do the job if it's ladders. Uh, and probably planks as well. Uh, ladder. Let's see what options we have. Ladder. Uh, we have a rope ladder. That's useful as well. But I can just make some of these. 24 ladders is probably too much. Um, let's just pop down here. And let's just see if there's anything else. Uh, that is crushed netherrack as well. As is this. Hmm... Tell you what, I'm going to build some ladders. I'm going to do a bit of exploration, see if there's anything down here. I'm going to get some torches, etc. And we'll bring you back once I manage to see a little bit more down there. Okay, so we're down here, and there is a bunch of different stuff that we can actually grab. There's plenty of gravel. There is more uh, netherrack, crushed netherrack, and there is also spawn chamber. So if you have a look in here, this is set up as a mob killing chamber. It's too high. And you'll see there's this row of nether brick slabs here. There's one at the other end as well, so it doesn't matter which way you dig. I think it's probably going to be in all four directions, I would have thought. Same thing is more excavated here, so you can get the idea. Uh, you can just dig out one of these. Uh, for instance, uh, we'll just get rid of... Oh, that's just nether rack. Um, you? Yep, so you'll see there is a spawn chamber up there. So if you just put in some blocks, I don't know, like... Um, like this... And wait for me to get up there. You got this area. You probably want to knock that block out. Yeah, and you can step here onto this. And you can get to wherever you need to kill. So both of those directions have a spawn chamber. And then down here a little ways, uh, you can... <clears throat> excuse me. There we go. You can see there's this area of obsidian. And inside that is some endstone and some crushed endstone, which you're more than welcome to sieve. Uh, that's very useful for that kind of thing. So yeah, gravel, crushed netherrack, netherrack, uh, endstone, crushed endstone, and two spawn chambers. So that is a very, very nice sort of in the in this area of the game. It does go down a little bit in the middle. I want to just get to the bottom and see if there's anything else there. But uh, I don't think there will be. Uh, I, well, I assume not. Let's just, let's just see if it actually goes any deeper. I doubt it. Well, it may do, but uh, let's just get rid of... Oh, ooh. Ooh. Maybe it does go deep. Ooh, lava. Okay, so it's only one deep lava, but lava all the same. I uh, don't want to fall in there accidentally. But I would like to harvest that lava and re... Well, we already get infinite lava upstairs, so I don't necessarily need it. But uh, maybe there's another use for it down there. Uh, we'll have to see. Uh, we could use that um, Ender I.O. sort of combustion generator or the, or the heat absorb or whatever it is. We also got some red sand as well, so that's that's perfectly fine. And uh, plenty of resources, really. So, yeah, we can take a look at that. Crushed Endstone. What does Crushed Endstone get us if we sieve it? Um, we get it... Oh, we get Ender Dust, 40% chance. And Glowstone, 10% chance. Don't care about the Glowstone so much. I do care about the Ender Dust. Four of those are Ender Pearls. So we can put that through a sieve, or indeed our sieving machine, and start to get Ender Dust. And, uh, yeah, I need to... Obviously, I didn't, these have uh, consumed all the power available, so I need to keep things going. Anyway, that's going to be it for today's episode. We've got some more automation done. We've got uh, it's first starting to end our own machines. I will go and make this simple powered furnace, but I'm not going to actually be using it. Uh, it is the gateway into advanced alloys, of course, this quest, and then into upgraded machines. But that needs steel as well, so I need to improve this. 
uh, sort of power generation setup. So I think I'm probably going to have to go via tree farms, maybe. Uh, that's certainly an infinite source until I get lava power of some case, in which case I can just use this. Unless I can figure out some lava generation options, and I'll do that off camera. So we'll, I'll show you the upgraded options next episode. But we are into the Ender IO quests now, and we'll see how far that goes. The, here was the other spawn chamber, if you remember. And uh, yeah, so we've got another space we can use for further storage down at the bottom. We've got uh, everything nice up here. I do need to probably make some more of those nets, but otherwise everything's looking pretty good. We've got automated witch water going on, and uh, we've got automated mini coal feeding, but we don't have any enough power coming out of that yet to uh, for that to continue indefinitely, and we do actually want that to happen. How much wood is being produced? Eh, a couple of stacks. So we could uh, grab one of those stacks, and we could just put it through the furnace just to generate like a stack of uh, charcoal. Anyway, I will leave it there for today, and we'll see you next time for some more breakouts. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe, share, click the bell if you want notifications, and we'll see you next time.